In this session, we're going to look at how to complete the network architecture. NWAR 5122 part one of the POE. So looking at the assignment document, the assignment document you would get from student material. I'm going to part one. Part one, it says integrated solution for the smart city. We've discussed the smart city and we will uh, speak more about it later on. For today, how to complete the assignment. You can see they want us to design an integrated network solution for smart city. You are expected to make your own assumptions, which must be documented regarding the details and the network specifications not provided in the scenario. Complete the following activities. So it's 40 marks in total, activity one, two, and three. How to do this now? I'm going to go into my OneDrive account. If I already don't have a network architecture folder created, I'll create a new folder. And I'm going to call it NWAR5122, and this is 2024. And I'll say create. And I'll click to go inside of this folder, and then I'll say add new Word document. It opens up a Word document. This is my assignment, my part one assignment answer now. So first thing, I click on document over here, where it says rename the file, and I'm going to call it whatever my student number is, so Ben, NWAR5112, 5122, and this is part uh a answer so i've given it a name so that i know what this is i'm going to insert a cover page insert where does it say cover page table page break etc okay page numbers, footers, headers, all of that you can put in here, right? So for this uh, demonstration, we're just going to look at the core. So make sure that you insert your cover page, you format it correctly, etc. I'm going to go straight into the question. So I've got an assignment answer document, and there's my question paper here. First one is activity one. Activity one, so I'm quickly, this is my rough work because I can go and clean this up later on. So I'm just going to put your NWAR5122 part A. And then I'm going to say this is activity one. And for activity one, I need to draw a table. So the table, I'm just going to separate this so I can easily scroll between the two. Okay, so it says similar to this one, I need to have three columns and I need to have a couple of rows. So three columns with a couple of rows. And they want me to list all of the network components or devices. So they've given us choices here, right? How do I know how many to list? You look at the mark allocation. If they are giving me 20 marks, I need to include enough information for 20 marks. So I'll go in here and then I'm going to insert. So I click on the top here, insert, and then I click on table. And then I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm going to just select. I want three rows and I want uh, multiple columns. It's inserted a table. What's in column A? Column A is types of network components or devices. So types of network components or devices is in column A. Column B has got, list all the types of components of devices in column A. So types of components or devices. Next one, it says describe each component or device. Where do I go to find the answers for this? First place I go to is to look at my learn. So I go into learn, and from learn, 
I click on learn on the left hand side here. I click on learning unit, and then I click on left uh, learning unit one. And for learning unit one now, I look at this talk about basic network concepts here, type of networks, etc. If I click on theme one, I can see that theme one has got uh, some information here. What am I looking for? I'm looking for network components for devices. So I'm scrolling down and I can see there they've got the word network component. Okay, so what are examples of network components? It says, how a root serve of each of the following network devices. So devices and components, they're using the terms interchangeably. It's the same thing. What are examples? Hubs, switches, uh, gateways, bridges, routers. These are all examples that I can use, okay? So I'm going to take this one and then I know what to include in here. It includes hubs, switches, gateways, bridges, routers, or devices. Where else would I find this information? I will go back into learn. And on the left-hand side, I'll click on more resources. I've got lecture slides. And this is chapter one slides. So if I open chapter one slides, I can see in chapter one, they are talking about networks in the internet, different types of network models and components, uh, etc. So I'm going to scroll down now and I'm looking for network components. I'm continuing until I get to network concerns, the internet, understanding network basics, a typical network, that's what it looks like, understanding network components. Now they are saying components. They are saying a component is a cable. So that's a network component. Next here, they are saying switches are network components, routers, bridges, gateways are all network components. So I'm going to use each of these one per row. Now, the job for a router is it connects two or more networks. You need to expand on this, right? I'm just showing you what information needs to be included. I'm not giving you how the answer should look like. I'm giving you clues as to what to put inside the table. Got it? You need to expand on it and explain in your own words. So I'm going to go back to my answer now. Let's say I chose here the network component is a router or a router. Then here, describe the component. Um, I'm just going to change that format. Uh, All right, this looks more like it, classic ribbon. So here, I just want to take out these bullet points. So let me actually just go and copy this format, and I'm just going to change the format. Okay. So router connects to a more network. If I took the example of a bridge, for example, or a switch, here it's telling me a switch does what? Similar to a hub, controls and manages transmissions of data, data transmissions. So there's an example of what a switch is going to do, right? Now, type of components or devices, a switch can be a managed switch or an unmanaged switch. Managed or unmanaged. Router, what different types of routers do you have? Okay, I can get an Ethernet router. I can get a multi-station access unit, MAU. That's actually not correct. Ethernet, let's say there's an Ethernet router that I'm using, okay? Any other types of routers? 
go and look at your material. It will give you ideas. So that's how to do activity one. Then activity two, what is it looking for? Activity two, Activity two, it says, draw similar to the one below and complete it by providing the required information in columns A and B. Network technologies or types, right? So here you can see I've given you an idea. Let's go and do it quickly. So here, just two columns. So I go to insert again, table, and it's got two columns. I insert my two columns. What's in the first column? Types of network technologies. So I'll put that here. And here it says, describe each network technology. So example of a network technology is a LAN. A description example would be, I'm going to go back to my slides and I'm going to see chapter one. Does it speak about LANs? There's more information, network models. And I'm looking now for, there's, they're talking about different types of protocols. And there's a local area network, right? There's the comparing different types of networks. I'm in chapter one slide. So I can see there's an example that I can take. Now, you are not allowed to do what I'm doing, copying and pasting like this. I am copying and pasting to show you what information should be included and where to get that information from. When you are doing it, you read it and you answer it using your own words. Also, use referencing, okay? There are other videos on referencing as well. Then, next question. Activity three. What does it say for activity three? Draw a table similar to the one below and complete it using your the information required. So here they are talking about types of internet technology and describe what each internet technology does. So where am I going to go again? I'm going to go back to my answer docket, uh, document. This is all part of activity one, isn't it? So this is activity one, question one. This is question two. And this is question three. So I need to put in another table. So I go again, insert, table. And I'm going to then go back. It says the types of technology. Can you see in my table, I don't have to say column A, column B. I just put a heading of what's inside there. Can you see, right? Then describe. So those are column headings now, describe. Internet technology, we came intranet. Another one we said was extranet. Let's look at my slides to see if I can get a description for these. So chapter one slide, I'm looking for intranet and extranet now. So I'm just going through my chapter one slides. There's it here. There's some information describing intranet and extranet. So I'm going to now put this information here. And this shows me now what's an example of question three answer. Internet uses same technologies as the internet. 
only open to those inside of the organization. Okay, that's the kind of information you're putting there. So I've done activity one, question one, question two, question three. I'm now going to do activity two. So activity two, enter. And I'm going to go to the question. Right, there's the marking rubric. You will go through the marking rubric to ensure that you have included all of the information correctly. Activity two, as a basic definition, subnetting is dividing the network into smaller network groups by doing this, and by doing this, using IP addresses more efficiently. IP addressing and subnetting are one of the important skills that is required. In this activity, you are required to select your own IP address with a CIDR location for subnetting. Example, 192.168.5.85/24. What does this mean? We'll discuss it just now. You will then use the address to determine subnets and IP addresses for the given network scenario. You can refer to the following resources. So go and watch these videos. These videos will explain in more detail what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a shortcut to get all of the answers. And if you follow the same way that I'm doing it, you will get the correct answers. For further understanding, go and watch these videos. Got it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use an online calculator. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to ask Google, I want to find a, a subnet calculator, subnet calculator. And I'm going to choose the first one that I find, which is IP subnet calculator. Right. Now it says choose your own IP address. We are all going to choose IP addresses to make it simple, right? So you're going to hear where it says IP address, IP version 4. I'm going to type 192. Why am I using the number 192.168? It's a private IP address, meaning it's only visible inside of your company's network, inside of your LAN. So I start typing 192.168.10.10. Now, you are going to use exactly the same thing, but you're going to change the last two numbers. Okay? So, when you are doing your example now, instead of you doing 192.168.10.10, you might choose 192.168.20.20. You might choose 192.168.35.1. Can you see? Only the last two numbers you are changing. The number can only go from 1 to 254. Right? So you can't choose any number. You can't choose 192.168.278. Uh, two seventy eight can't work. Why? It's greater than 254. Got it? Right? Any number you can choose between 1 and 254. Have you written it down? We are looking at me blankly. Okay? So any numbers between 1 and 254 is what you can choose for the last two numbers. Then, where it says subnet here, we're all going to choose the same subnet, okay? So I click on the drop down here, and I'm going to select the subnet that says 255.255.255.0 slash 24. So we all select the same subnet. What is the subnet that we select? 255.255.255.0 slash 24. Got it? Okay. Now, I click on calculate. 
And after I've clicked on calculate, it gives me all the answers that I'm looking for here. Okay. Let me go back now to my assignment and see how they want me to answer my assignment. They say complete the following. Select an IP address. The IP address must be CIIDR. Do not use this example. So they use 192.168.24.10 slash 27. I use 192.168.10.10 or 10.20, whatever number I use, slash 24. Can you see? Okay. Then it says determine the default subnet mask, determine the subnet, uh, determine a subnet mask, determine the block size, determine the number of subnets, Determine the number of valid hosts per subnet. Determine the network IP address, the broadcast IP address, the first valid host and last valid host. Determine the number of usable host addresses. You will use the information to allocate the IP address to all of your nodes in the network diagram. Now it says adequately selected. Do not use this example. Must be in CIDR notation like this one here. Okay. So in my example, I've got 192.168.10.10. They said the network address is this. Usable host range is from this to this. Broadcast address is this address. Number of hosts, number of um, usable sub um, hosts, etc., is given to us here. Now, for this particular address that I have chosen, the maximum computers that I can have here is 254, this one here. Okay. They are saying if you've got a network and you've got 254 computers on that network and you want to divide that network into smaller networks, this is now called subnetting. So in this example, I, I have shown you what is the size of this particular network called 192.168.10.0, right? I typed in an address of 10.10, .10 and then I said slash 24. Okay, now I want to subnet this IP address. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to look for a calculator again, subnet calculator, subnet calculator online. And let's see if this one is going to help me. Yes. Okay. So I've selected Jody's VE IP calc. Right. Now, my IP address is 192.168.10. Let me just make this one bigger. My address is 192.168.10.10. That's the IP address that I'm using, right? It is currently at 24. Remember I said slash 24. Now, net mask for subnet optional. I want to move from 24 to 26. And I'm going to say calculate. Now, what has it done for me? It has created two, uh, four subnets for me. Okay. So what I have just done now is I've taken my network that had, in this example, 254 computers on this one network. And I've divided that one network into four subnets. Okay, how did I do that? I went and opened this calculator. I typed in my same IP address. My network mask was 24. I changed it to 26. Okay, so the explanation about why all of these numbers is given to you in those videos. Okay, I'm showing you how to complete the assignment, get the correct answers. Got it? Now, let me go and answer the questions from the assignment. 
I have to now ensure that I've done all of these things correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy all of these things and I'm going to then um, write out the answers for it. So I'm going to go to my answer page. Activity two. And let me get all of the questions. And we're going to show you how to answer the questions now. For the first one, what did I choose to use? 192.168.10.10. And I said slash 24. That was the original IP address, right? Original. And I'm going to subnet to 192.168.10.10. Dot one six eight dot ten dot ten slash twenty six. Right? When I increased the last number, it allowed me to break the network into smaller networks. Okay, so the subnet, this is my subnet that I'm going to be using. Okay, so the correct one here is going to be this one here. Then determine the default subnet mask. Where will I find this default subnet mask? I'm going to go here. This is the default subnet mask that I was using, which was um, Right, the determine a subnet mask, the default subnet mask. What is the default subnet mask that I was using? It was 255.255.255.0. Determine a subnet mask. So a subnet mask is where? Here. Yeah. Net mask. There's a example of a network mask. I can use any one of these here. One network is called 192. Next network is called 64. Next network is called um, 128. These are now the smaller networks that I have created. So I'm going to use the first one. Right. So the first one here is 192. Determine the block size. Determine the number of subnets. Determine the number of valid hosts in each subnet. OK. Now, what do they mean by block size here? The block size is from start to finish IP addresses. So if I'm using the first subnet, this one starts at 192.168.10.1, and it goes to 192.168.10.62. So all computers that are dot one, dot two, dot three, going up to dot 62 are in this subnet. Got it? Okay. So when they say block size, where does it start and where does it finish? So I'm going to now start with this one here. It says it starts at one and it goes up to 62. So I'm going to go from one. Sixty-two. 
So the block size is all the IP addresses from 192.168.10.1 going up to um, 62. Right. Then determine the number of subnets. How many subnets or smaller networks did I get? How many? There's it here, four. There's one network, there's another network, another network, another network, right? So it's given me four subnets. So number of subnets, four. Four subnets. Determine the number of valid hosts in each subnet. In other words, how many computers, host is another name for a device or a um, computer that has an IP address. That's host. Okay? So, how many hosts? In each of these, how many hosts can I have? There's the answer here 62. So I can have 62 on this network, I can have 62 on this network, I can have 62 on this network, I can have 62 on this network. Can you see? So number of hosts per network is 62. So 62 hosts per subnet. Determine the network IP address. Then determine the broadcast address. So, network IP address, what is the network ID? It tells me here, there's the network ID here. So, I chose the first one, right? Remember, you could have chosen any one of them. But since I chose the first one, there's my network ID here. So, I'm going to copy my network ID. And I put it in here. There's my network IP address for this subnet. What is the broadcast address? Here it says there's the broadcast address. Broadcast address means it goes to all computers on this network. Say, I wanted to send a message to all the computers in this room. We are currently in room 501. I will speak loudly and you can all receive the message. On this network, which address can I send the message to so all the computers on that network get it, right? It is this broadcast address. Can you see each of the subnets have got different broadcast addresses? Yes? So we are working with the first one here. Okay, so when you are doing your answer as well, if you've chosen the first one, only work on the first one. If you've chosen the second one, only work on the second one. Got it? Do not go and choose from different subnets because it will be incorrect. I go here now and I'm looking at broadcast address. I'm working on the first subnet, so I'm going to copy this broadcast address here. And that's going to be my answer here. Determine the first valid host and the last valid host. So the first valid host and last valid host has been given here, right? So the block size is actually um, from 1 to 62 means 62. Sixty-two hosts, what we gave before. So, first valid IP address and last valid IP address. There's it here. I'm going to put it in here. So, first valid IP. First valid is that one and then last valid ip
Can you see when I'm answering the question, I have to answer the question. I can't just put four. For what? For subnet. Can you see? When they say first valid and last valid IP address, I didn't just put 192.168.10.1 and 192.168.10.62. I typed, what is it? So the first valid IP address is 192.168.10.1. The last valid IP address, correct your spelling, right? IP address is 192.168.10.62. Determine the number of usable host addresses. Usable host addresses. So in total, how many of these can be used? It can be 62 plus 62, which is 124 plus 62 plus 62. So in total, it's 248. Can you see? Originally, I had 254 on the big one, one big network. Now, I can only have 248. Why? I lost those other IP addresses because they are being used for subnetting now. Does it make sense? Okay. That's why I lost from 254 and I came down to 248 because those IP addresses are used to identify the smaller networks in the big network. So the valid uh, usable IP addresses is 248. So I go back and I type in here. Usable host addresses are 248. So in total, I can have 248 computers now in these four small networks. If I had one big network, I could have 254. But now I've broken them into four smaller networks, and per network I can have 62, and in total now I can have 248. Make sense? Yes. Anything else? So we are done now with how to do activity two. Activity three, remember, for more detailed explanation about what these numbers mean and why I chose all of these things, Go and watch the videos, right? You have any additional questions? Come and ask me. Okay, but this shows you now how to answer your part one and how to get the correct information for part one. Then activity three. What does the question ask for activity three? Identify the protocols required for the network solution outlined. Each protocol explaining its roles and use. So network protocols. Right. So where do I go? I go back to my learn and I look for protocols. Where is it covered? If I go to my learning unit, I can see network protocols is in learning unit three. Okay. If I click on learning unit three, what are the different protocols that they are talking about here? Theme one speaks about types of network protocols. So I'm going to click on types of network protocols. And there it gives me a picture of a number of different protocols that I can use. I can use all of these protocols, DNS, IP, HTTP, FTP, etc. And then I can see it's in chapter three of my textbook. So I'm going to go to my chapter three slides. And here I can see network protocols. 
So two important protocols they speak about is TCP IP. And then the next one they speak about is Apple Talk. In our scenario, we're going to choose TCP IP as the protocol that we're going to use. Got it? Okay. Now, if I look at TCP IP, it's a suite of protocols. That means it's a combination of multiple protocols. If I look at what are the different protocols that are included, you can see here I've got Telnet, FTP, SMTP, SNMP. I've got TCP, UDP. I've got IC, um, IP. I've got Ethernet token ring. The protocols that we are going to be using is as follows, right? We're going to use SM. TP, that's for what? For email. We're going to use FTP, that's for what? Transferring files, copying software, transferring files. We're going to use, okay, the network management protocol is a little bit uh, for managing devices, but let's just take two examples that we're going to be using. Okay, so you are going to use these protocols in your answer. FTP, SMTP. You are going to use TCP as a protocol. You're going to use IP as a protocol. You are going to use Ethernet as a protocol. Right? So how many have I given you? FTP, SMTP, TCP, IP, and token ring. How many? Five protocols. Got it? Have you written it down? So the protocols that you are using, minimum is FTP, SMTP, TCP, IP, and Ethernet. So in the question paper, it now says, what do I want? I need to list the protocol. I need to explain the role of the protocol. I need to explain how the protocol will be used in the network solution. And then I need to say, OK, this one I can't say anything about. So let's give you an example of the protocol that I'm going to be using, right? If I list a protocol, so I'm going to put it into a table so it makes it easy for me, right? Name of protocol, role of protocol, and then solution, right? So I need three columns. So I'm going to go to my answer document now. And I'm going to the insert table. I'm going to put three columns. Uh, this one's got four. So I'm going to say insert table, three columns. So the first one is got name of protocol. The next one they said I must do is what? The role of protocol. Next one, how used in the network solution? How protocol is used in solution? How? The protocol how the protocol is used in the solution so the name of protocol I gave you one was called SMTP what is the role of this protocol simple message transfer protocol what is it used to receive email messages uh, it's a mail email protocol.
So email. or protocol used for email, right? So email protocol or protocol used for email. How is the protocol used in the solution? SMTP is going to be used. Receive what is the key for uh, how did I open up the spell check? What function key did I press? F seven, right? So if you've got errors in your spelling, whatever the spelling is, right? And I press F7 on the keyboard. It will open up the spell check. I click on spelling. And then it says, these are the correct spellings that you can use. And then I select, and it corrects the spelling for me, right? So this is how to spell check your Word document. Use the F7 key. Similarly, I will say FTP, what is its role? TCP, IP, etc. Right? Ethernet was the other one that we gave you. So for each of these protocols, what is the role? What does it do? Right? FTP allows me to transfer files. How is it going to be used in the solution? It's going to be used for uh, to make uh, data, files, folders, software available for users to download. Like you've got FTP, download software, yes? So in the same way, FTP is going to be used to download software or download certain data on the network. Got it? Right? So I've given you two examples. You fill in that until you get to your mark allocation, which is 10 marks for that question. How many marks? 10 marks, right? So you make sure you have included all the info that is required. Yes, someone had questions? Yes. So you can... For the referencing, if you've used certain websites, there were two websites that I did in the video. There you can see the website, calculator.net is the first one that I used. The second one that I used was Josie's DE. Okay. Any other questions? So, this week, this assignment should be finished and it should be ready because we have a lot of work to do for this module. You have to create virtual computers like you are doing for CNOS, right, for the last part of the POE. So this part must be done quickly, got out of the way, we must finish question two, get it out of the way, then we can work with the thing that's going to take long time, okay, which is what? The final POE. If we only work to do final POE late, we are not going to finish. You are going to fail. So when I say this is not uh, maybe yes, no, whatever, this must be finished today, must be finished tomorrow. Like I did it right now, right? You can do this. You can finish it this week. Next week, you start working on part two on your own. Forget about when it's due and all of that. We need to ensure we're going to pass the module. I am giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to pass this module. Got it? Follow the instructions. You do the work when I say it needs to be done. You will pass this module with a distinction. Got it? Okay. <clears throat>